Hi, I'm Dr. Namita Swaroop Sachdeva and I practice internal medicine and geriatric medicines out of Pinnacle Care Internal Medicine in Peoria, Arizona. This video was made for our patients in an effort to answer some of the COVID-19 vaccine questions that seems to be coming up again and again. So without much further ado, I'm going to dive straight into the questions and try and answer them to the best of my abilities. So in the US currently, there are six vaccines that are getting uh, federal government support. The vaccines that have been approved under the EUA or Emergency Use Act are two and they're available in Arizona. Number one is the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine and number two is the Moderna vaccine. Question number one, how do these vaccines work and which one is better? Both the vaccines are very similar. They are both mRNA vaccines. These are new types of vaccines that were produced to protect us against getting serious or severe COVID-19 infections. These vaccines do not have any live virus and hence are incapable of causing infections themselves. These vaccines are intramuscular and once injected into our muscles, it will start the process of making our bodies build up an immune response that will remember how to fight the virus that causes COVID-19 infection if we were infected by the virus in the future. The messenger RNA is not able to get into the nucleus of our cells and will not alter our DNA in any way. It is destroyed once the immune response starts to build up. Both vaccines are equally effective. They both require uh, two shots, um, a priming dose followed by a booster shot. The interval between Moderna doses is around 28 days and the interval between the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine is 21 days. And you're supposed to have adequate immunity 10 to 15 days, 10 to 14 days after your second shot. Um, Pfizer is approved for people over the age of 16, whereas Moderna is approved for people over the age of 18. As far as efficacy is concerned, both have 94.5 to 95% efficacy um, to prevent severe COVID-19 infection, even in people with pre-existing conditions. It is, however, not known of if either one of them will prevent asymptomatic infections with SARS-CoV-2 virus, nor is it known if the vaccinated people can transmit virus if they do become infected. Uh, we also don't know how long the protection uh, would last for both the vaccines. However, it is expected to be at least 12 months or more. Uh, just to be transparent, on my review of the phase three trial data, it did show that Moderna vaccine was a little bit more effective than Pfizer to prevent severe COVID-19 infections. The side effect profile of Pfizer vaccine looked better than Moderna vaccine. However, these percentages are tricky because some of these were based on very small numbers. So for example, in Pfizer uh, trial, one of the patients got severe COVID-19 infection and that brought their numbers down, making Moderna look a little bit better. Also, uh, some trials use more diverse group of people than others. So it's very difficult to make a real comparison between the both, both the vaccines at this time. Just as a side note, uh, Vice President Pence took the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, whereas Dr. Fossey took the Moderna vaccine. Question number two, the vaccine was rushed and may not be safe in the long term. There is a fair amount of understandable anxiety because of how quickly the vaccine was produced. However, be rest assured that any vaccine that is made available to public will have first been totally tested and reviewed by experts. Safety is very important for vaccine development and a lot of attention is given to the safety profile because vaccines are given to healthy people. There are four reasons why COVID-19 vaccine development progressed so rapidly. The number one reason is that even though COVID-19 is a new virus, it is very similar to SARS and MERS. Now, these were the viruses that had previously made a jump from animals to people. Because of the SARS outbreak in 2003, researchers had already started developing strategies and potential targets like the famous spike protein. So they had a head start, which definitely helped. Number two is new vaccine technology. Now to produce any vaccine, it generally requires tons and tons of viruses to be first produced. This is very time consuming. So scientists were already working on the mRNA technology for the last 10 years. And 
that helped. Number three reason was the ability now to test and develop hundreds of vaccines candidates simultaneously using different technology and different targets. And this helped a lot. And number four, and probably one of the most important reasons was that there was an unprecedented financial support. Governments across the globe provided financial backing for vaccine development, including the US government, which obviously helped. Now, as far as long-term side effects, Based on historical data, if you don't see a safety concern in two months, it is not likely for a vaccine to have any long-term adverse effects. FDA did a review of vaccine literature and two months safety data was reviewed by FDA before granting the emergency use authorization for the vaccine. Question number three, what are the side effects of the vaccines? Most common side effects are injection site pain, uh, swelling, redness, fatigue, muscle aches, fever, joint pains, nausea, uh, swollen lymph nodes. All of these uh, so-called side effects indicate that your body is reacting to the vaccine and you are having a good immune response, which is a good sign. There have been some uh, cases of severe allergic reactions and that can happen within a few minutes to one hour after you get the vaccination. The allergic reaction may present with difficulty breathing, a swelling of the face and throat, a fast heartbeat, dizziness and weakness. So far, there have only been a handful of cases of allergic reactions to the vaccine and none of these patients required hospitalization and there were no casualties or fatalities secondary to the allergic reaction. For mild uh, side effects, uh, just taking some Tylenol, using the ice pack at the injection site and resting for a day is good enough. For severe allergic reaction, you might need some medical intervention, uh, something like an EpiPen or steroids. Um, to make sure that everyone is safe, people are monitored for around 15 to 20 minutes after getting the injection. And there are provisions available at most injection sites to take care of people who might have some kind of an allergic reaction to the vaccine. Question number four, who should avoid taking the vaccine? Anybody who has severe allergic reactions to the ingredients of the vaccine will have to forego the vaccine. The most common reason for allergic reactions is the polyethylene glycol that is present in the vaccine or PEG. PEG is commonly used in osmotic laxatives like the colon prep for colonoscopy. It's also used in cosmetics. Other ingredients in the COVID-19 vaccine along with mRNA are generally pretty safe. It's the lipid um, um, carrier. Uh, there's potassium chloride, uh, potassium phosphate, sodium chloride, sodium phosphate dihydrate, and sucrose. People who have seasonal allergies or minor allergies need not worry. If you're concerned, it will, it will be best to reach out to your healthcare providers with any questions or concerns. Question number five. Is it safe in pregnant women and breastfeeding women? Unfortunately, there is no data that is available for pregnant women and breastfeeding women at this time. If you are at high risk or COVID-19 vaccine has been recommended for you, I would suggest that you please discuss it with your healthcare provider before getting the injection. Question number six. Is it safe for people with decreased immunity, people who have cancers, people who are immunocompromised, people who are currently on immunosuppressive medications or chemotherapy? It is considered safe and it is recommended in people who have compromised immunity because COVID-19 infection seems to be worse in people with decreased immunity. However, people who are on immunosuppressives or chemotherapy or steroids might not be able to make adequate immune response and hence might not be adequately protected. Question seven, can I go back to normal life after I get COVID vaccine? COVID vaccine is going to protect you from serious infections that require hospitalization. However, it has not been proven to prevent mild infections or even asymptomatic infections nor has it been proven to prevent transmission of infection to other people around you if you were to get an infection. Hence, it is strongly recommended that you continue to maintain social distancing, practice hand hygiene, wear your mask um, in public like you were doing before. Question number eight, how about the new variant um, and viral mutation that was just discovered in the UK? Will this vaccine be effective against them? The vaccine will probably be affected, effective against the new uh, mutated virus, which is apparently even more infectious, although 
thankfully not more deadly. We have known for a while that viruses mutate, but we need to understand that mutation depends upon the quantity of virus in circulation. Once the amount of virus in circulation decreases, uh, whether by vaccination, natural infection, or by other means, mutation rate will decrease. This is all the more reason for us to get vaccinated. At least 80 to 90% of the population needs to develop immunity by vaccination or otherwise to prevent future problems caused by the virus. Question nine, what if I have already had COVID-19 infection? Can I skip the vaccine? CDC is recommending that you still get the vaccine as immunity secondary to natural infection lasts for about 90 days and vaccine is supposed to last longer. Question number 10, have I, Dr. Sachdeva, received my vaccine yet? yet? Absolutely. I got my first dose of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine on December 28th. And here's my card. Dr. A. Sachdeva also got his vaccination along with me. We are both doing fine after the vaccine. Um, I did experience a low-grade fever, some tenderness at the vaccine site, and it lasted for around 24 hours, and Tylenol and an ice pack was quite effective. There will be another video that will be posted about our experience, and it will hopefully help um, you to navigate this process once you're ready to get your vaccine. Question number 11. When can the general public get vaccinated? Vaccination is being rolled out in phases. In Maricopa County, phase one will last from December uh, 2020 till spring of 2021. It is divided into three categories. 1A, in which vaccine is given to healthcare workers and long-term care facilities that is going on right now. 1B would be for law enforcement, uh, for teachers and child care workers and essential services workers. Uh, 1C will be for people over the age of 65. Phase two will last from uh, spring of 2021 till summer of 2021, where critical population and general population will be given vaccination. And phase three is any remaining general population um, that is left. If 80 to 90% of people are able to get vaccinated, hopefully the pandemic can be brought under control by the end of spring of 2021. Till then, continue to take all precautions as usual. Question number 12, how strongly and honestly and how confidently do I recommend vaccination for my patients? I strongly recommend vaccinations for my patients. I'm quite confident in the science behind the production of this vaccine. Besides being a physician, I'm also a mom, a daughter and a wife. And I would not knowingly take a chance that can potentially prevent me from fulfilling my responsibilities and obligations. Taking the vaccine is the smart thing to do. If we have to get back to normal life and end this pandemic, we will need the support of all. COVID-19 infection can not only be deadly, but now we are seeing quite a bit of long-term complications secondary to the infection. Uh, that significantly impairs people's quality of life, including chronic lung disease, um, heart diseases, stroke, memory problems, sight problems, and even teeth, gum, and eye problems are being seen in people who have recovered from COVID-19 infections. So ladies and gentlemen, go get your vaccine at the first chance that you get. Till then, take care, take your precautions, uh, stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you.